Welcome to Sophia's Emporium. My name is Suze Pratt. Today is January 24th, 2017. This is a rebroadcast of a show that was originally published in August 20, well, August 30th, 2016. Now, why you may find this show interesting is because it finishes up my chapter with CCN in The Never Ending Story. When you are being attacked covertly and overtly, you need a plan B and you need a method to protect yourself. This is what I shared in the heat of the battle. And I knew this would be my last official show um, the Sophia's Emporium that follows thereafter. I did a short intro, some intel, some disclosure, and moved into a video. So I'm going to share the screen with you guys. And uh, welcome. Hi, friends. Welcome to another interesting episode of Sophia's Emporium here on the Conscious Consumer Network. Um, man, I missed everybody this week. Uh, I unplugged. So for anybody that wondered, where's Susan's big mouth? How come she's not saying nothing? See, the garden was calling me outside. And so... I went out and connected with nature and uh, pulled some bad weeds, you know, the kind that just destroy your garden and your flowers and your arrangement and your pattern. But there was these really purposeful weeds that I had something to do with. So I don't know if you guys have ever heard of purslane, but they say that it is the most nutritious green leaf plant that we have here on the earth to eat. And this stuff grows like, you know, in the cracks um, around your sidewalk or you know, in between bricks. Um, it's really abundant and it's everywhere. So I figured with all the uh, bad news that we're getting these days, whether it's, you know, <clears throat> the money system is shutting down and all the stores closing and not having nothing to eat or say even we have to worry about the adulteration of nutritional supplements or our food supply or whatnot. We have this gift from God called purslane. So whether I'm chopping on a couple pieces of it a day or if it comes down to having to put this into a salad, I have it. And it looks nice in the front yard. Uh, it's in a barren place where the sun beats down and the grass doesn't grow. They say that weeds are just plants that no one's to find the purpose of. So I tried to define some purposes this week, actual literally outdoors right. and metaphorically speaking, you know, within my own being. So I did want y'all to know that I was thinking about you. I feel everybody's suffering. And I wish I could do something. When I first came online two years ago, believe it or not, I was going through the very same thing. So, you know, I'm... I mean, who knows, really, what my role is, but 
I do see myself as someone that tries to build bridges and, you know, help and have a positive um, contribution. But in this exact time, a couple of years ago, here's what I wrote down for August 27th. And that was in the year 2014. That would be the day we take the show live. Go from autonomy into form. You say, well, what does that mean, Suze? I mean, what is this live chart and stuff all about? But here's what it means, okay? I felt so lost online because I had never been on the computer and I was trying to log things in for my business and to actually uh, have some kind of a footprint online. I honestly didn't have one. And, uh, you know, people search their own names and you search Susanna Pratt or Suze Pratt or Susie Pratt and I mean, I was really just simply a nobody, and that was cool with me. And I was used to it from a lifetime, you know. So anyhow, at this time, I was struggling. <clears throat> I didn't know my Gmail, and uh, I sure didn't know any passwords, and I just couldn't get it right. So you wonder how I even got to that point of that struggle. And like I told you, I was recruited. And uh, this guy named Troy Sparks was the first person that really chose to extend himself and help me at the beginning of my journey. So here's what I'm saying. This dude was working with a company called Single Platform at the time, which takes dummies like me that have never been on the computer and sets them up a Facebook page and, you know, gets the word out there about them and all this. And I had told him, man, I don't need all this. My business is word of mouth. But I do have a mission and I do have a purpose. And so we had talked a little about that. And this was his advice that he had for me. He said, Suze, every word that you type or speak will be searched. And I was like, right. I mean, I had always heard that about the internet, I mean, there are no secrets for real. I mean, at the click of the button, all of your shit's there for somebody to dissect and crucify. I, I surely knew this. But it wasn't until the phenomena on September 1st that those very words were confirmed for me through the event that happened. And we're not going to go down that road today. Um, maybe next week. I'm right in the middle of those two times here, of course, right now. So I'd rather just connect dots for you guys and uh, journal in the story, right? So you see, that's how autonomy into form actually was a a living expression, like Rudolf Steiner talks about, where it actually arose in me and this thing happened to me. I was initiated into this new world. Um, between those two days, I popped up as number 44 in a YouTube search for Sue's Pratt. Now, I've been called a lot of things in my life, and I've surely had a lot of names. 
when I was young, I preferred Susie. My <clears throat> given and uh, legal name on my birth certificate is Susanna. But my gram, well, both of my grandmas, actually, I remember them calling me Sus. And over the years, there were people that just kind of vibed out that my name was Sus. You know, well, everybody was saying maybe I was Sue or Susan. And you get into this whole rigmarole about who are we? And as we know, we barely know who we are in one lifetime. And now we got to add on all these multi-dimensional personas of ourselves. Well, anyhow, I thought maybe I would bring that up because there's something called cell memory that they've proven. And of course, we know this with uh, Bruce Lipton's work, The Biology of Belief, and all the different people that have come forward to say that, you know, really, I mean, it's through our beliefs that we create. So, this last week, I'm afraid that people that love each other are creating from old programs that we're all under. So, I mean, here again, never any judgment. But uh, before I go on with the show, I got this little recommendation letter here about me because people think, really, what the hell do I have? Even speaking my opinion. I mean, I was never a real blogger or blogger. <laughs> and surely I've learned a lot about journalism, but we can't say that I'm a true journalist. And um, for those that need me to have documents and verifications that I'm an expert, all I can really do is offer you my trade, which is hairdressing. But my experience comes, of course, from living this out loud in my life. And so I came into you guys' world as someone that was instructed to share my personal journey to help people. And, and I knew that it could get tough. But I knew that it was worth it. I think everybody that I've been involved with online is deserving of respect for their true nature as well as for what they bring. So namaste, everyone. Back to my little recommendation letter. You guys know that I'm into Steiner. And you know that I'm doing this live charting. And you know that I know that everybody can feel the true intention of the work, and it is being monitored. So back in the day, before I was on the computer, and when Ian, my youngest son, was in the Waldorf school system, it was so weird for me. I'm always between worlds. Um, at the Waldorf School, they really didn't talk about spiritual science and Rudolf Steiner much because that's really more geared for the adult-initiated mind. Whereas, I mean, myself, I had come to the school on a kind of the adult stuff, right? And of course, the childhood stuff was wonderful. I mean, we all want to keep our kids safe. And it's amazing, you guys. It's just, all oh, this is amazing. But anyhow, 
you know me, I was talking back then, and um, they were working on cultural and economic differences and uh, talking about bullying at the parent meeting. Right, the parents so, are bullies. At mm. this time, Brian, who was my dear friend, she was too ill to work. And a wonderful man named John Wilder had become my son's teacher. In the Waldorf school, believe it or not, the same teacher stays with the kid at least through grade six. So you develop a much deeper relationship and the learning can blossom. Well, anyhow, what they're saying here is that the meeting, you know, they're going to allot 15 to 20 minutes of each parent meeting to spiritual study. And they also decided to rotate the location of future parent meetings to the parents' homes or to another location chosen by the parents hosting a particular meeting. And he's so sweet. You see, he wrote me a note here. And so I'll go ahead and read it to you. It says, Susie, as you, Suze, are the most expert of us in spiritual science, would you take the lead on the spiritual study at the next parent meeting? I would be glad to have the meeting in Ferguson, either at your salon or home. I know the other parents would bring food and drink. Please consider this as you have a lot to offer. John. Well, you know, even though I have a lot to offer, I guess a lot of people get upset when I speak, and uh, that's followed me all my life, but I've always kept speaking. So, welcome to Sue's World today. And uh, I want to take you back into a little bit about, man, Sophia is awesome, even if she is falling, right? I mean, we have to focus here, guys. So we go back to this idea that Sophia had these three children. And I guess this was the results of what they call her miscreation. But surely there was good in it, too. I, I mean, I'll need to talk to somebody on a higher level to figure all these things out as we go, right? But the three kids' names were Faith, Hope, and Charity. And Faith would be the confidence in ourselves that our decisions are sound. Hope resonates a vibration that reflects our positive attitude and our momentum and the outcome we create from our desires. Charity is a heart unafraid and the heart brain belief of giving help to others. How, when, and where we can. If we could just apply those principles to what we learned last week, It could help. I watched something last night. It makes a lot of sense. Now, we're really fortunate that this false program bullshit is breaking down in front of our very eyes. And, you know, the guy says, well, right, because this cabal isn't cohesive as it used to be. It doesn't really stick together like it used to. Uh, the people are too weak, they're too deviant, they're too messed up, I don't know. So 
also, of course, the message to all of us is that if we can get the verbiage and the words uh, into a place that could create this common language that we could all be cohesive together, even though we have these differences. And of course, that's what I've always believed. So that resonated too. But this, uh, all the problems in the world we're going through. I mean, there's a million valid reasons, surely. But in the end, it's all about this love and unconditional love and oh, all these things. So I always remember when I was a kid growing up with those little love is dolls and you know, they didn't really have any sexual organs. They were butt ass naked with a belly button. And they'd say these, you know, evolved or uh, very childlike. It, it depended on which cartoon they were in, you see. But anyhow, they told us what love was. And I always, you know, looked at those things and thought, I'm not really sure if that's what love is. Now, if that was part of the program, it makes sense now, wouldn't it, since we knew, oh, if we only knew then, what well, we knew now about how subliminal stuff works, right? But anyhow, I like what uh, my friend Mark Stavish that we spoke of last week says about what love is. So here we go. We got three kinds of love. And the first, I would say is the most engaged in, it's the most used, and the most manipulated. It's the simplest of the three, and they call it Eros, E-R-O-S, and you guys know that means desire. So Eros, the love of sensation, magnetism, attraction, and seduction. It's also, because remember, as above, so below. So we'll, we'll always have a couple parameters where we decide what we believe in between these spaces, sacred spaces. Okay, Eros, the love of the Holy Spirit and the lower self. This is the key to all magic and transformation. There's a quote by William Blake that was included in this that I felt was very uh, poignant, very strong. And that is, he who desires but acts not breeds pestilence. Okay, so remember last week in the show, I mean to all my family, but focused on my grandchildren and my daughter. Um, we spoke about a parent's or an adult or a caretaker's job is to be able to instill a state of bliss. And unfortunately, as we know, these states of bliss can offer us a high road or a low road. And, you know, in my example, from the last show, Lauren learned a state of bliss because she saw a mom that she saw her own path could evolve into her own. So 
She didn't want to control me. She wanted to do the same things I did. And, you know, if that was at five years old, you know, putting on a bra and standing like this and posing, just like every little girl is trained to do, whether they're in those dopey dance recitals or, um, you know, whatever little club thing they're in. I mean, come on. It is not that abnormal these days to have children in those states because, of course, they learn from, uh, what do we call it? You're imitating somebody, right? You're learning through it in, in, in uh, yeah, I can't even say it again. So hopefully you guys got it the first time. Imitation. There it is. <laughs> right. Um, of course, here's the hardest part. And of course, my big mouth, you know, has talked about it on the show where I talk about the twin flame soulmate experience and all these, you know, different kinds of love. We are born into this world sexual creatures that do not think about sex. We don't even know what it is, right? Now we learn. We see things. Maybe things happen to us. Um, who knows? But when you combine the statement that all human beings are sexual creatures along with the explosive statement that my big mouth has also mentioned, which is, okay, for the initiate that seeks oneness with creator God, what would that feel like? How do you define that? And there's only one word for it. And of course that word, is defined through sexuality. But as we go down the spiritual path, huh, we also learn that when our kundalini is activated and we've got that, you know, middle pillar and all of these things, bliss is related in human terms to the word I wrote on the paper towel and I'm just going to show it real quick and put it down. Okay, there we go. Just throw that off to the side. So, I hope everybody sees why I connected all those things. It is no wonder that we've always had this problem in the human race. That's all. Okay. I think we covered Eros enough. Now, let's go on to Phylos. And Phylos is the need to nurture a burning desire concerning others. That sounds innocent enough, doesn't it? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, let's go on. So, Philos is a fraternal love. It's love for the interrelatedness for all beings, seen and unseen. It is not foolish to love, yet quite easily it can be made so by manipulation, guilt, and idealism. So we start out with a core truth and we're expanding, you see. I like that. Okay, we have a, a scary quote here. Um, it's actually from something I've never heard of called the voice of the devil. 
so the quote is those who restrain desire do so because they are weak enough to be restrained and the restrainer or reason usurps its place and governs the unwilling. And that's a really great sentence. And the reason it clicked to me is because, here again, my big mouth, um, talks about how easy it is for folks to be puppeted or possessed. So the people that are puppeted and possessed are weak. And we already know that. So <clears throat> we can wrap our minds around this. Last but not least, on our Love Is Tour, we have agape, and that is love of the divine, mystical realization of ourself as self, and its expression in our relation with others. It says, this is easily confused as love is the emotion that bonds things together in their proper relationship. And they suggest that, you know, the seeker relaxes and allows the experience to arise. And I will tell you from my journey that <clears throat> back in 2005, when I faced myself, it was that easy. It all just started arising. And that was... When I started reading Steiner, and you guys know the rest of the story. I just want everybody to uh, check out the piece I got in my hair. And this is what I just hope for all of us that we can do. All right. So. I had video entertainment for you guys today. Like I, you know, I always like to provide a, a well-rounded um, variety of sources of what I feel is love and entertainment. So uh, I've just been notified that our first video is ready, which is so awesome. I really appreciate that. Big thanks for beeping that in there to me. So. I just want everybody to pull their heads out of the gutter <laughs> because this video is called Talk on the Wild Side with Sue's Our Dirty Little Secret. And, and Joe drew on it. So you're going to see that it's been embellished just a little bit. Okay. Okay. This warning, do not play, swim, or fish. And you can see Drew, Joe drew that hook. <laughs> and he drew the <laughs> Yeah, I, I see the bottom. Yeah, you see what he, you see what he did now? Is that an acronym by any chance? Oh, I believe so. <laughs> NNDC turds. Yeah. Okay. So here's what it says. It says possible sewage overflow. Mm. Exposure to water may cause illness and i thought this was quite timely and synchronistic with everything that we've explored about water and the truth that we know about water so now they're telling us okay now this, this, this gets even better please report foul odor, odors unusual discoloration or flow from outfall during dry weather and of course it's the st louis metropolitan sewer district Maybe somebody wants their phone number. 314-768-6260. Uh, and I could actually put a sign number there 
if I was inclined. So on the back, we have a lovely letter and I'll just hit you with the high points. Oh Lord. Depending on where sewer overflows are located within MSD's system, they are classified as constructed separate sewer overflows or combined sewage overflows. Mm -hmm. If an overflow discharges or not is dependent upon a number of factors, including how much rain falls over a given period of time, the result is that not all overflows discharge every time it rains. In fact, some overflows will go months or years without discharging. So you can imagine how much caca mm -hmm. is there either way you go. Um, per a consent decree between MSD, the United States Environmental Protection Agency, and the Missouri Coalition for the Environmental Foundation, MSD must now post notification signs at constructed separate sewer overflow points. A copy of the sign for these overflows is enclosed. Pursuant to regulatory reg requirements, signs for combined sewer flows are also posted. The signs and the mailing are being done to notify the public of the existence and location of constructed separate sewer, blah, blah, blah. Oh, and they do want um, owners of multiple residential dwellings or commercial properties like we've already talked about. Mm -hmm. 25 South Morrison, it has a basement full of poo already. Oh, shit. Right. Oh, shit. I almost said, oh, shit, but seeing that you said it. <laughs> well, I did say it, I, I, and I try not to cuss too much, but it just came like flying out, like yeah. diarrhea or something. I, you know, yeah. Yeah. I, I it. it just keeps happening. Um, they, uh, you know, want to make sure the tenants know mm -hmm. so they can drink bottled water, I guess. Um, the issue of overflows is a focus of theirs and uh, yada, yada, yada. They've spent all this money and eliminated over 38 overflows. Um, today they're working on Project Clear and they need $4.7 billion in spending over 23 years. And this work began in the year 2013. Hmm. Oh, and it's going to help generations to come. So hopefully they won't have to worry about the nuclear dump down the street or, mm -hmm. you know, or Monsanto or any of it because it's all right here in St. Louis. Do you have a dump in St. Louis? A nuclear dump? We do. It's from um, the World War II uh, story. Mm -hmm and everything. It's about 10 minutes down the way in a town called Richmond Heights. Oh and um, the people have been complaining and have been sick there for years. The babies have cancer. Um, oh, what a, that's just terrible. Nobody can sell their house, of course, because what schmuck would want to buy it? Yeah, of course. I am dead. Yeah. What a shame. It really is. It's a tragic shame. And just like what we've been talking about, though, the more that we can have a place of love in our hearts, mm -hmm. but at the same time call these demons out, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's the name of the game. Well, that's what's happening. You know, people are awakening and, uh, you know, this thing that you're talking about with respect to plutonium and stuff like that, I, I would venture to say that 20 years ago, no one had a clue you know, of these things, but now they are. So I, I think there's a lot of signs to be hopeful about it. It's just that, you know, we have such a corrupt government and uh, it's just so much uh, money and fascism and all that stuff that just keeps everyone under, under this bizarre control, this illusion, if you will. Poof. It mm -hmm. could change. It will change. Right. In two minutes. Poof. It must change. It will change. One way or another. Yeah. It will change, no doubt about that. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, I, just, um, it's just uh, keep focusing on what you're saying. You know, just keep sending out that that 
vibration, that love, that energy, show people what it's like to be really compassionate, uh, people will see it. They'll, they'll gravitate to it. And uh, that's, where it's, that's the beginning. So that's how we, this whole thing is going to change. And that's what's going on right now. It's so much fun to be involved in it. I know I say that every week and mm -hmm. I get a little teary over it, but, mm -hmm. you know, living my whole life with the knowledge that this day was coming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then to see the beauty in it, instead of to just be wrapped up in all the shit, here I'll say that word one more time and be done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it, it's, it's such a blessing and such an honor. and Everybody that is here on this planet asked to sign up for this. So, well, you know, it depends on how, you know, philosophically how you look at it. Uh, I have a view that the lower worlds where we live, we are residing right now and interacting, uh, these worlds were not created to be heaven. Right. You know, this is this is where we come to learn. This is where we come to experience things. And uh, unfortunately, some of these things are pretty strong. But we also know in our hearts, if you're awakened enough, that this is something that we, as soul, we will always continue, and we will continue to shape the future for ourselves and also for the planet, because that's just the way uh, things must evolve. And so maybe someday this will all become paradise and and uh, and change. I, but still, you, you you always need the you know this is like a school of higher learning. You come here to suffer. I hate mean, to say it. That's what the Gnostics would say. Right. And, uh, and so you come into this reality to suffer. I mean, putting it bluntly. And uh, when we come out the other end, we learn things about compassion. And well, we, we learn about these other virtues. You know, I confess to you that I believe it's so we can experience and feel mm -hmm. what this divine creator feels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just don't, you know, to me, the important thing is to always remember to be detached and yeah. not allow yourself to get caught up in the drama that, you know, if you're a heart math person that, you know, actually measures your heart rhythm and stuff. Uh, you want to you got to you want to stay in that place where no matter what goes on your rhythm is always healthy it's a healthy rhythm exactly and you know just like the idea of letting it go there is a process that must be worked through in order to let it go you just can't say okay i'm going to throw it down and there it goes and that's the journey. So. so, you know what I really enjoyed about that video is that was the first iMovie that I figured out that I could take these little bars and I could insert them wherever I wanted and incorporate another dialogue. So you see, that's like a double message and it has double meaning, which I like that. Um, recently, I also used that high technology to illustrate certain points and truths during our 4th of July parade here in Ferguson. I'm not really sure when parades became as political as ours was. I wanted to point that out. And I also wanted to point out different things about the behavior of people in the crowd, as well as the messages that they were sending. All right, now, back to our little theme for these last couple weeks. These days, it seems like I like to focus on different ways of 
protecting myself and also sharing with others how to do that um, on very simple terms of course we have the different uh, tools at our disposal like homeopathy or Baki flower essence we have essential oils like thieves oil uh, you know annoy ourselves we have ways of extending our aura out nine feet to make a force field. We have five feet of space around our being at all times. There, there's, there's all sorts of things. But one of the things that I had never really uh, heard about was Psalm 91. So, I thought I'd like to read that Psalm 91, and I just wanted to mention, believe it or not, this big old Bible here is my Glasscock Richardson family Bible. And of course, I grew up in a home with no love. No indoctrination into the Bible. I, I, I chose it at 12, and I think I've shared that with you guys many times. And there were certain parts of it that I really did love. And <clears throat> when I heard this psalm, it was one of those ones. It's like, wow, this is one I need to memorize. So I'd like to share it with you guys. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him I will trust. Surely He <clears throat> shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come <clears throat> nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation, there shall be no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon, shall thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble, so I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. It's hard to read him that many times, but I know that they're really talking about the entire creator God, male and female. Like I said, this is a pretty old book or an old version of it. So, protection prayers. a deep subject and 
especially coming from a subject like today, which is to not really have a family, but to have a great family. And, and to see the duality in that and be okay with it. And then add to it that of course, here I've been blessed with the ability to share things in a timeline and to have this excellent memory and to have the skills for my secretarial training to document and leave message, whether it's for a spiritual family on YouTube or Conscious Consumers Network or Facebook or Twitter or what the flip, I don't know. It's it's about leaving it for the future, isn't it? And of course, I have that interest, that personal interest for the grandbabies and for my daughters. Of course, these are for Lauren too, even though she's with me. I mean, maybe when she gets older, she'll listen to these and gain more understanding. It's similar to reading a book a dozen times or a hundred times. And since you're in a different place each time, of course, you either gain more knowledge from it or it departs and it, it becomes almost like something that you wasted your time with, right? But as far as this time online, to me, it's not a waste. And I know that I pull things together and try to build these bridges. But it's truly <clears throat> a part of me that's always been behind the chair with my clients and my friends, and surely with my children as they were growing up. Now, today's message, of course, to these grandchildren that don't get to know their wicked grandmother, you know, in this bad fairy tale and blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, I grew up without really knowing who my family and so I really do appreciate these wise women like my grandma Opal and my grandma Hazel that left these things. And first, as far as the Glasscock Richardson side, I've shared with you through YouTubes and through Sophia's Emporium that the Glasscock name is very and mysterious and connected with key things down through time and history. So what I find really interesting is that my grandma Opal labeled every one of her pictures. She wanted to make sure I knew who was an aunt, who was a niece, who this person was, you know, where on the Glasscock side, even though she knew them all, she didn't write anything down. And it wasn't because she was lazy or she wasn't meticulous or she didn't care or she didn't love. Um, it was meant to be that way. And like I've shared with you guys too through life charting, I'm just so happy for the history that I have come into the knowledge of. We always have to be grateful for what we're given. And um, what I've learned 
about this glass cock sign is that first off the actual name would have originally been spelled G-L-A-S-S-C-O. Um, one of my dear friends online, Crichton Miller, shared with me that my family name is connected to the great uh, stained glass builders, you know, the people that built the windows and the cathedrals. That would have been my kid back in the day. Now, as far as modern time goes, and this is so relevant today, but this is still an enigma and a mystery, is that there was a Thomas and Jane Glasscock in 1643 in these Americas, and they had a patent. Now, you can't do a search. Believe me, I've tried, you know, with that information and get an answer. But the answer you do get takes us back to Manhattan. And um, when I was looking at the search, it said from this time on, it was to be known as the Land Patent Act of 1643. Wow. And here I'm a glass cock, right? Living in a time where we have literally no rights. I, I hope that doesn't shock anybody by now. And you think, well, I've got this proof. And I know we've been talking about, you know, say, in civil law and, you know, the no victim, no crime thing. But what about no euros for you guys? When you have proof, but nobody wants to see it. And when you try to share that proof, people say, Ooh, that's a little too personal. You may not want to talk about that. Somebody may come get you. And granted, somebody did come get me a few weeks ago. Um, somebody put up a fake uh, flipping YouTube page for me called Sophia's Emporium and, you know, photoshopped some picture from my show. And oddly enough, uh, they put up a couple of... Um, Angela uh, Power Disney's little videos in this fake Sophia, Sophia's Emporium YouTube thing, and they were shorts. And the thing that your um, investigative journalist, uh, spiritual researcher, Sue's figured out was that I think purposely her name wasn't spelled right because then it wasn't a plagiarism, maybe. I mean, I don't know. Fortunately, that channel has already been discombobulated and, uh, you know, it really, it was never like a big deal to me anyhow because, um, you know, I just hit that little flag on the YouTube thing and filed a report. So, easy peasy, right? But if my whole life... I needed to tell a story for a reason. And now it's even more important. Because if I can't tell the story you see, now these children will never know what most of us don't know, which is who we are and where we came from. And these things are essential to know in getting home. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing, just to set it in stone and give you my personal witness and testimony. I do have a reason for this season, and 
it is above me. I'm just a servant. So, anyhow, um, real quick on this family Bible, I just want to show you the artwork. I, I really should already have it photographed even. You know, you think about all the things that you should do, but I'm just going to flip you up a few quick pictures there, which isn't what I was talking about. I wanted to talk about the beauty and the quality of these pages. And I'll bet y'all, dollar down, that these pages were made out of some kind of cloth it was made out of some kind of hemp. I mean, the duration of this is great. Hey, look, now here, kids, so I'm talking to Leela, Chloe, Rourke, Chelsea, Zach, Lauren, Ian, anybody that's listening. Look, there's Susanna Bernadine in the family Bible. And I don't want to cry or nothing, but you know, to see that and to know that she cared that much is exactly why I care that much. So, um, she even wrote some things down on paper and shoved it in there. I mean, her writing. Was <clears throat> wasn't usually that sloppy. Maybe she was at the end of her writing. Who knows? Um, I have a picture journal of my Glasscock Richardson side now that I'd like to share. And these people all, um, lived around uh, Jefferson City in the state of Missouri and the small town was called Ashland but I guess that it really isn't that interesting for people that don't know me but I always hope that it inspires you guys to pull out your old family pictures at least and invite these spirits into your lives. Because like we found out, until us humans can think these thoughts, then our angels cannot intercede and help. I think that's one of the reasons I've been so blessed is because I do keep those dear loved ones that people want to call D-E-A-D. -E I mean, they're all around here and it's a beautiful thing in a historic home, but like I've told you before, <clears throat> and of course, I do keep my grandchildren's pictures all around too, even though they're surely still here. It works the same way. Now, here's what they say. Let's say that either you're astral traveling or maybe you're on the other side, whatever. And you look down and you want to check something out or see something. They say that you would see it like through a little, you know, a little observation of, telescope or something versus when you open yourself up to these things and honor their memories and heirlooms and things that they loved and it's more like a uh, like a uh, drive-in movie screen like a giant screen and so surely they have plenty of other things to do but with that screen being so big, they can see everything we're doing too. So always make sure to create your God big enough to praise. 
All right, let's roll that footage in my family, Biggie. Seventeen-year-old girls talking.
It's Ferguson in the fifties. Fiftieth wedding anniversary. All righty then. So interesting how simple life was and how even when we just see a black and white picture we gain an understanding of how clean and pristine the land was as compared to what we're dealing with now so kitties never forget in a never-ending story with a wipe of a hand poof the divine creator can clean this mess up if that's her choice. His choice, her choice, whatever, right? But back to the story. Um, people say, oh, here she goes again with life charts. But that's all right, man, because one day y'all are going to want to do this, and it's all going to be great. But there's my grandma holding my hand when I'm little, you see. And the reason I bring this up is because the subject I'm getting ready to cover with my grandkids is the same shit she experienced. And let me tell you why that is. So I'm five years old. Well, I'm actually six. I'm in kindergarten. It's 1970. My mom has just had her second child. She's under some kind of program. I don't know what it is, you know, and I do have very strong feelings on what it is, and that's why I cover this. And that helps y'all know how to not hate someone that tried to ruin your life by, you know, whatever they did to you. So, anyhow. In garden year, I'm gonna go say, you know, goodbye to my dad. I'm running down the attic stairs. Now, wait a second, you can't run down stairs when you're six years old and they're sharp attic stairs. I was coming down the stairs like a trot. Why does that matter? We're documenting evidence, okay? Now, all of a sudden, here is my mom with a big pot of water, turning around and dumping it on me. This, friends, is why I have no hair on this side of my hairline, right? See, I have no shame. I've already exposed my whole story. So, my grandparents wanted to know what the hell happened to their granddaughter. Why come did she get second and third degree burns on her face? Now, you know, after they asked that question, my parents quit driving to go visit Grandma Opal and Grandpa Ewing. You see what I'm saying? Does anybody hear me out there? So, I've seen this in my direct experience. When I was neglected or abused and burned, that's when my family wasn't allowed to come around and see me. Maybe I talk because I got such a big mouth, right? Well, the same thing here. I've got going on in the generation. It would be my children and grandchildren. So, whatever happened, that divided my family, whatever it may be, you see. The babies are suffering because love is being withheld. Now, there's a lot of bad things that happen in the world. You know, I'm the first bitch to know that. But it's all about the bigger picture. It's not about the physical plane here on earth as much as it is about what we carry with us into eternity. 
And so it is in our advantage to be able to burn out the dross, which I have done, and be able to love someone, whether I agree with them or not, and call out what I choose to call out. So I'm calling this out for you babies. And I'm calling it out for grandma too. And my first question to anybody that thinks it's okay to um, just shut down without any kind of reason and to not apply what they've learned and know about this mind control and these programs that these deviant behaviors and cults and rings and all sorts of shit. Come on, man. I want to keep everybody safe here. Mama says clean this stuff up. So what I ask on this piece of paper as I'm helping myself heal is should C and Z have to explain their rationale? Now you see that's a simple question. That's like what's going on with all the big um, you know, computer wars and everything. I mean, this is a way to help with all of these things. So here again, I highly suggest that people figure out who they are and how they got here so they can get home. And, you know, I love to color these little templates that you see in my life charting stuff. And so here, what I wrote in the spaces is 1775, Patrick Henry, The Call to Arms. And I put faith, love, and hope, you see in the little peace sign there. And it says, is it natural to man to indulge in the illusion of hope? For my part, whatever anguish of spirit it may cost, I am willing to know the whole truth, to know the worst, and prove for it. And here's what I just love about this. You see, I'm making this face here. And it's amazing how kids <laughs> learn little things. And so here you are, Leela, making the same face Grandma is. And I just wanted you to know it was Grandpa Joe that did your hair that day. So for anybody <laughs> that thinks it was me, <laughs> oh, that's great. All right. Now, kids, and big kids too, when we talk about Sophia and Gnostic poems, here it is. And so you see, I grabbed another one of my copyright-free templates and started coloring. Now, back when I was in this trauma, if uh, I would have been Susie Crystal Ball and they said, hey, wait, don't color your only copy because you're gonna share this with the world one day. Well, then maybe I would have done it a different way. But you see, what was most important was to work through the reality that I was handed and to heal and have hope and faith and pray and, you know, work a little alchemy, man. So here in this picture, you'll see the age of the kids when I became all the rotten things to anyone that needed somebody to blame the world on. So, you remember Lauren from last week? There she is. And there's my Chelsea Pratt. There's your kid, your uh, mom, kids. And there's Ian. And right there's my ex. So, let me read you that poem. I am the first and the last. I am the honored one and the scorned one. I am the whore and the holy one. I am the wife and the virgin. 
I am the mother and the daughter. I am she whose wedding is great, and I have not taken a husband. I am knowledge and ignorance. And I wrote around the top, all are creators and destroyers. Yes, I destroyed reality and divorced. Whatever is said that is truthful and loving, no one has the right to hold against you. And I wrote, speaking my truth, knowing myself, has set me free from the suffering I can control. Next up on the list, we have a quote here from a dude called Edward Everett Hale, and he was the chaplain of the U.S. Senate in the mid 20th century. And you can see we got some blind justice going on here, right? It says, I am only one, but still I am one. I cannot do everything, but still I can do something. And because I cannot do everything, I will not refuse to do something that I can do. That's from the book, Dynamic Freedoms. And that's how I survived my life. So I hope that being a mother and a grandmother, that those uh, strengths were instilled into my bloodline, just like they were given to me. And last but not least, and you know, isn't it funny? It was just like, what, two years ago, five years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, whatever, that we actually did believe we were free. We did believe that we were more than um, useless eaters or that, you know, maybe we were just fuel for some flipping psychic vampire or whatever, you know, or the matrix, you know, um, but only in the divided states could you have stupid rules that they make different in each state and see that way you can really never get any problem taken care of, of course, because we'll just step over to this other place. They got a worse problem. So, you know, just like me, I mean, I might have problems and have things that I need to do, but because everybody else's problems are always bigger, my shit's always put off to the end. And that's okay, because it's made me strong. I, I, I deal with these things quite well. And even though, like I said, that I don't get to see with my own eyes or touch with my own hands, it's okay because I still send my love to all of the people and all of my grandchildren that I can't see. So we do have to go beyond, don't we? And here in Missouri, which is some bullshit. Now, you can see I picked this one that says, that, you know, you only have rights in a one specific case. And like I told you, what that is, is that if the mom and dad divorced and just the mom got custody, then the dad side would get to have visitation rights. And like I've told y'all, I think those are called loopholes. And I think every messed up law that we're under, saying we understand, <laughs> is a flipping loophole. And if people don't have the intelligence to figure out who's safe and who's dangerous and who's rotten, well, then they've already been assimilated. I'm sorry, I can feel it. 
And I know that it can be measured because it's being done so at this very moment. All right. So here's what I got to say about parental alienation. Because even me, I mean, my goodness, I didn't alienate my mother from my children's life, and I didn't alienate her from mine. I worked with her up until the moment she passed. And I worked with her up until the moment she passed. All right. Every child's life is enriched by the relationship with their grandparents when they love each other. And parental alienation is a legal term. Now, mind you, I wouldn't go hire a lawyer because I surely know that I'm already dead to them. So, um, and, you know, this is what I pro say, right? All right. Just want to show you real quick. Sugar butt, here you are. Grandma's always got you. Always remember these things. Okay. Now, I want to tell you why my oldest daughter said she loved me so much. Because you know what? I am really a great mom. I mean, who could ask for somebody that would be more empathetic to their feelings or be fair or honest or loving. So this is why Chelsea said she loved me in the year 1999. She always gives me another chance. Talks to me about everything. Listens to my opinions. Takes me in my friends' places and loves me for who I am. She respects my opinions and decisions. Hey, do you notice this is a 12-year-old kid saying opinions twice? Hopefully somebody's brain's clicking around hearing this. All right. Uh, my mom always has a shoulder for me to cry on and always takes care of me and makes sure everything is all right. That's really what I do. I like to think for everybody that I interact with. See here again, I can love unconditionally. I've been through that fire. But a lot of people just can't love more than a few people. And if they do, it's perverse. So I think this is here again, the problem we're dealing with to this day. Um, back in 2000, Nine, when it was disclosed to me that my baby wanted to end it all. And she went away for a while and came back. She thanked me for saving her then. And like I told you last week, if part of my archetypal nature suggests that I need to go down to the gates of hell to save people, then sure the hell I will. And I'll go through the fire, too. Okay. 5.30, guys. <laughs> and, you know, that shift to 2012, man. You know, it's funny. My religion teacher, Pastor Rep from Luther North, he got this cool old dude. He's going to do the wedding ceremony at the big yellow house. And then he gets switched over to uh, the other family's home. And he goes in with this sermon. And of course, they told him that he could say whatever he wanted to say. And of course, keep in mind that my high school teacher, Art Rep, my dear friend and client, he baptized my kids, too. So, sugar butt, look how much you look like your mom here. See this? That's the day your mom got baptized. And uh, you're 
here's Lauren again, you guys. <laughs> Met her, so we'll go on with that. And here's me on my wedding day, of course. Pastor Rep um, married my ex and I, too. So, when, um, when you hear this, keep in mind, I had nothing to do with this. This is what he chose to say. And uh, I don't think they probably liked it very much. So, kids, I'm going to read you this sermon from the day your mom and dad were married. And then we're going to go into a uh, little fairy tale thing that should tie this all up nice and neat in a package for you. So here we go. 6.45 p.m., May 31st, 2012. You asked me to say something for you at this time in this ceremony. So here goes. You place no restraint upon what I am to say. For you, this is a moment almost unrestrained joy and happiness. This is not the time to be somber, and we won't be. There is, however, a dimension to this moment that you must never forget. That dimension is the shape of things to come. Today, raindrops may keep falling on our heads, but that is no reason of self-centered sorrow. We need this rain badly, and the Almighty did not receive an invitation to this wedding. And it wouldn't have made a difference if he was. So, we need not be disgruntled at the weather's water on our faces, or in our hair, or on our food. Your dress may be ruined, but your happiness need not be ransacked. As wet as we may all be, we will weather the storm. But what about the future? That, of course, is where all of your life lies. But we cannot look into the future and don't let anyone tell you that they can do it for you either. In one metaphor sense, we live our lives looking into a rear view mirror. Don't try and peer into the future. There is no such thing. Yet there is, however, your past. That is where you want to look right now. There may be times in your past that you wish could be relived. They can't, period. But you still must look at your past so that you may know your now and make your future something good. Your past is what you are now. Cut yourself off from the roots that are your past and you die. The roots are not perfect. Don't arrogantly reject the imperfection by assuming the rejection is perfect. If you pull in on yourself, you will die. This is a condition described in an ancient Latin expression, curvitus in se, curved in on self. It's a fancy way of describing the famous foo bird, which flies around and round in ever decreasing circles until it flies up its own rear end and disappears. Your love for each other, your joy in being with each other, and the glee which comes from being together with your girls can seduce you to think you can go it alone. Or like Sinatra's terrible, selfish bleed, I did it my way. Trick yourself into thinking that you don't need your family. Do your life your way alone, and you'll be nothing. You will be the roots, the past, to your children, and you will pass that aloneness to them. Not through genes, but through your non-life, and they will die too. Instead of curving in on yourself, stand yourself up and open your arms to what made you who you are. Draw your life from those imperfect roots of your past and grow them into leaves and flowers of joy and happiness. Pastor Arthur Rupp, Jr. Bless his heart, man. You know how many balls that took? See, they had asked him to do a pagan ceremony and they were going to burn pictures of their family. And <laughs> oh my gosh, you know, I mean, dude did this wedding without even wearing his little religious collar. I mean, he went in secular and he went in with my approval. It didn't matter what had happened to us that day. Just like it doesn't matter about me being targeted 
and oppressed to this very day. It's about what I do with it. So that's the end of my soapbox today. Um, I've been accused of that in the past, kids. But Grandma does have one more trick up her sleeve. And for everybody that doesn't want to go through this, I completely understand and I send blessings and love and appreciation to you if you don't want to sit through this childish cartoon that I came across. There is reading to be done. And I know my babies will all be homeschooled by my very intelligent daughter who I love. So y'all will know how to read this. And for my grown up friends, you know, if it moves you, man, read it. If not, peace out till next week. Um, this video is 20 minutes long. So I'm going to give you my closing right now. And like I said, peace, love, and light always from the big yellow house on the third cosmic ray in Sue's world. And as long as we're all still here, I'll see you next week. With that, enjoy your video. It's not ready yet? Well then, I'll just yak on some more. Is it gonna be ready before the show's done, Big? Another corrupted file, Mr. It Boho? Will. Right. It will be. Hmm. But I don't want to run over and, and get other people. So right. how are we gonna do this? Right. How many minutes do we have? How many minutes is our audience waiting? Oh, so, all right. Well, okay, everybody. Now, here's the rub, okay? We got 22 minutes left, and we have a 20-minute video. Right. And I know I've already said goodbye, but as you can see, I'm still here. As if they that like video of my emotions in the next two minutes, then we'll watch it. And if it doesn't, we won't. Right, because it'd be my fault if I ran over. No in doubt. the meantime, though, what shall I occupy you with, you wonder? And so I'm going to pull this out. And, uh, you know, music means so much to all of us, I know. And as I was going through my development with all of these new things, one of the great inspirational voices to me has always been Tracy Chapman. Absolutely love her. You want to talk about somebody that they didn't grab up and suck into the program? This woman stands strong and proud and independent, and she is bought or owned by no one. And I send so much appreciation to you, Tracy, because your music has inspired me beyond the words that I could get out right now. So, when I was in my transition and thinking about my purpose with Joe and Joe's purpose with me and what people might think of us or, you know, because we really never were in the box and now here we're defying all good laws, um, you know, by allowing ourselves the love that needed to come into this plane so we can transcend these things, right? But there's this song and it's called, You're the One. And maybe you guys can relate to this. So here we go. Some say you're crazy, say that you're no good. Say your family's cursed with bad blood. But I think you're cute and misunderstood. And I wouldn't change you if I could. Let them talk you down, call you names. My mind's made up, it ain't gonna change. 
I'm sure in my heart, happy and free. You're the one, you're the one, you're the one for me. All right. Some say you're bitter, think you're mean, uncouth, untamed, and unrestrained. But I think you're sensitive and sweet. Stay as you are. Don't change a thing. Last verse real quick. Some say your body wicked and wild, a restless, useless juvenile. But I think you're funny and I like your smile. Want to be with you to stay a while. All right. So, yes, I know my story is a fairy tale of love and light and magic and da 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 da. And here we go with the fairy tale for all us big kids now. So, whoever's around, whoever's around, I hope you enjoy it. Peace out till next week. Go ahead, baby. Thank you.
does whatever get easier? The pain of every loss or the pain of this loss? Right. for you, CCM. I write this in the hope that you will read it and that when you do, I'll be gone. I am old Spike, and I've been expecting this for a long time. I am happy with the life I had and the time I was able to spend with my friends, especially you. You mean the world to me, Spike. You're the family I never had, but I wish I didn't have to leave you like this, but my time has come, and you still have so much more ahead of you. I hope that you had fun today at the festival and that my passing doesn't taint it for you. I knew when you left that it would probably be the last time we would see each other, and I was okay with that. I hear it was nothing you couldn't have done, and it was better for you to be having fun than crouched helpless at my side. <laughs> don't blame yourself and don't bury yourself in the past. You were like a brother to me, and I want you to live your life and not spend it moaning about me. You are my son, Spike, in every way that matters, and someday far, far in the future, when your own time comes, we'll be together again, and we can have one final adventure together. I'll be waiting for you. And this is the last little paragraph. <laughs>
I love the mandolin. Um, say that with people too that uh you're always alive as long as people remember you and it's not an ego thing remember you it's remember the story remember the moral to the story remember that people that were associated to the story because we are rewriting history exactly what's going on. The end. Okay. So, you know, that um, drawing cartoon, I think that was like uh, to make you think about My Little Pony. And of course, when my daughter Chelsea was little she loved my little pony and she had one of those things too so bing bang boom that's the show for today and uh, I appreciate all of y'all so sorry I'm a little teary um hey for real peace love and light from the big yellow house on the third cosmic ray in Sue's world talk soon <laughs>